For many years, tension has existed in Europe between the forces of NATO and the Warsaw Pact. And it is in West Germany that any future attack might well be launched. The threat comes, of course, from the Soviet-controlled East, and nobody in the free world can predict when, or indeed if, an attack will come. Beyond the East German border is the largest Soviet force outside the Soviet Union. And if the invasion ever comes, many of you are the soldiers who will have to face it. You need to have the answers ready before the problems arise and learn the lessons today, because tomorrow could be too late. Although you've got an obvious interest in broad Soviet military doctrine, it's really of little practical importance to you as a regimental soldier. What matters most to you is what the Soviets will try to do to you and what you can do about it. So let's assume that political reasons have led to the Soviets launching an attack, giving us little or no warning of their actions. To meet the Soviet threat, our units are rapidly occupying their battle positions. Only a few hours away, a Soviet motor rifle regiment is moving towards our covering force, squadron and company group positions. For the sake of speed, Soviet forces will usually move forward in column. As in our own army, the grouping will vary according to the task. But we are now going to look at a typical deployment of the motor rifle regiment in the advance after moving out of their assembly area. This is the main body of the Motor Rifle Regiment, with the bulk of its striking power. About 10 kilometers ahead of the main body will be the advanced guard of reinforced battalion strength. To avoid confusion, the groups which compose the advanced guard are referred to as the CRP, Combat Reconnaissance Patrol, which is the leading element, the vanguard and the main guard. The main guard consists of the tank company's headquarters and two platoons of tanks, battalion headquarters and two motor rifle companies, anti-tank and air defense weapons, artillery headquarters and at least one battery of howitzers, plus a troop of combat engineers. It will have flanking reconnaissance elements. The Vanguard, a reinforced company group, has three tanks, ten APCs and two self-propelled air defence vehicles with anti-tank and combat engineer support, NBC reconnaissance and artillery reconnaissance. Possibly it may have the battalion's battery of mortars and will have its own reconnaissance. Moving up to ten kilometres ahead of the Vanguard, the CRP is composed of a motor rifle platoon mounted in APCs and a battle tank and may be supported by other elements appropriate to its mission. Well ahead and to the flanks of the combat reconnaissance patrol, spear point of the advanced guard, will be other reconnaissance elements. They may evade you because they do not fight unless forced to. But the combat reconnaissance patrol, here mounted in BTR 60 PBs, is required to brush aside opposition, as well as proving routes and reporting on obstacles and on any of your positions or other troops in the path of the regiment's advance. reconnaissance will try and confirm our positions in depth. 
From positions astride his axis, your covering forces engage and delay the advancing enemy, hitting his armour where practicable on his more vulnerable flanks. Here and on other thrust lines, Soviet soldiers and recce vehicles are now paying dearly for the press arm tactics which lie at the root of Soviet doctrine. The only information that the CRP has gathered so far is that they've been fired on by a mixed force of tanks and infantry. This information is immediately transmitted back to the advanced guard and the regiment by the surviving members of the CRP. They will now try to find out whether you're just a fighting patrol or part of a much bigger force. With the CRP destroyed, the next element of the advanced guard, the vanguard, can be expected to come into action within 30 minutes. From advancing in line of march, the deployment of the Soviet vanguard goes ahead as a well-practiced drill. The tank platoon and infantry company deploy into three columns with about 300 meters between columns. They will move forward in this formation as far as tactically possible when they will deploy into extended line with some 50 meters between vehicles. This is the attack formation that will normally be used by all Soviet ground forces however large or small the number of men and vehicles involved. The Soviet company commander's vehicle, flanked by an air defence section, takes up a position about 500 metres to the rear of the line. During this deployment, the artillery will put down covering fire, which may include smoke, in support of the attacking tanks and APCs. This type of attack from the line of march is always pressed home fiercely. enemy has been forced to deploy, has been delayed and has suffered more casualties. Our covering forces subunit has now done its job in this position and redeploys. The infantry M-bus behind cover and move off followed by the scimitars. The tanks give covering fire. Some kilometers further west, the main British force is waiting to receive the Soviet attack. The demolitions are blown and the minefield gaps are being closed. The main battle is now about to begin. But as an example, we are only going to view the battle through the eyes of just one company group, which has been ordered to deny the enemy the use of the main access route between two wooded hills. The hills astride the valley give good reverse slope protection against direct enemy fire and allow defiladed anti-armour and GPMG fire on the approaching vanguard. Routes have been cratered and minefield gaps closed. Alternative battle positions have also been prepared. The approach of the Soviet vanguard will be preceded by reconnaissance, seeking reliable information of your position to help plan their subsequent attack. In this case, the reconnaissance includes a BMP. The decision whether to open fire and destroy the enemy recce before he can communicate your position or whether to hold fire so as to remain concealed will be set down in your fire control orders. In this case, your orders were to engage the enemy when they reached the minefield 
since it was unlikely that a well-trained recce patrol could fail to spot something. Because the patrol was hit early, the enemy's only real information is of the weapons that fired, which they could easily mistake for yet another of the covering units which have been plaguing their advance. <laughs> Nevertheless, the surviving vehicles, followed by the complete Soviet vanguard, attack as a drill, supported by artillery fire on the area they think is our main position. takes its toll, the Soviet tanks continue to press forward. But it is already becoming clear to the vanguard commander that this is not just a delaying position. This is a strong force, dug in, and they're hitting him hard. The vanguard is now unable to move forward. It will not withdraw, but may adjust position, so as to observe and bring effective fire onto the defence. Within 60 minutes of first contact, the main guard will have moved up to join the vanguard. And with its arrival, more artillery becomes available to lay down a heavier barrage. However many attacks by forward elements of the advanced guard you have to face, you can be sure of one thing, they will not withdraw, because to the Soviets, minor setbacks are not defeats. They'll try to press forward, and will only accept loss of momentum when you force it upon them. With the arrival of the main guard, another nine tanks, 18 more APCs, anti-tank and air defence weapons, additional artillery and mortars, you are now facing an attack by the reinforced motor rifle battalion, which constitutes the complete advanced guard. Even though the advanced guard is only a third of the motor rifle regiment, the enemy force against you, at this early stage of the battle, is formidable. You may also have been attacked from the air, which could include fire support helicopters. And if divisional artillery has been allotted to the regiment, you can expect additional fire from heavier guns and multiple barreled rocket launchers. Although overhead cover will prevent heavy casualties, the barrage will cause confusion and will obscure our fields of fire. But before they can get to grips with your main positions, the Soviets still have your minefield to cross, which is covered by observation and direct fire. So the first sight you will have of the enemy's main guard attack will be his mine-clearing tanks. Clearing tanks are closely followed into the minefield by other tanks, which now keep rigidly to the safe paths. 
Behind the tanks come the infantry in their APCs. Soviet infantry debus only when they have no alternative. In this case, to widen the frontage of the assault, the infantry must dismount, as their wheeled APCs are unable to follow in the tracks of the tanks. Because they dismount over the top of the vehicle, infantry dismounting from BTR-60 PBs are very vulnerable to both direct and indirect fire. So this attack is now by dismounted infantry, protected by tanks and by fire from the APC, which will remain on the far side of the minefield. In addition to their automatic weapons, they may be supported by AGS-17 automatic grenade launchers. Smoke may well be used to screen the dismounted troops as they advance. Initially, the infantrymen must follow the cleared lanes through the minefields before fanning out. So although the minefield may not stop the Soviets' determined advance, it has already done a useful job by forcing the enemy to dismount their infantry. Now is the time to prove how good you are on a man-to-man -man basis. The Soviet infantryman is a conscript. He may have been in the army six months, perhaps a year, but no more than two years. By your standards, he's trained only to a limited task. But don't underestimate him. His weapon skills are good. He knows how to go forward and how to attack. Under current Soviet military doctrine, that's all he needs to know. You're seeing almost all of his military knowledge now. With your superior training and skills, what you must know is how to stop him. <laughs> 